Space Fighter 2, the plucking battle, alternating versus raking, fight! If you try to play a song without a solid bass plucking technique game plan, you could easily stumble your way into a knockout. And if you don't build the right habits into your plucking technique early on, you might fall into the big bad plucking trap, which I'll explain later. So do you need to choose strict alternating or raking and stick to it long term, or is it okay to mix and match? Let's find out as we battle these techniques and see who emerges victorious. Hadouken! Before we dive into this battle of the base plucking techniques, let's meet our challengers with a super quick example. I'm gonna say I for index and M for middle, just to clean up the word garbage. With strict alternating, you play index, middle, back and forth 100% of the time, regardless of string crossing and note groupings. So you just pluck this I, M, I, M, I, M, or M, I, M, I, M, I, if you start it on the middle. With raking, when you come back down to lower pitched strings, you use the finger you just plucked with to pluck the next string too. So you'd pluck I, I am, and then since your middle's resting on the D string, after your G string pluck, you'd reuse it, go M, I, and then reuse your index on the A string. So all together, I, M, M, I, I, M. So that's the basic mechanics. Now let's put these techniques to the test. They'll fight it out in three rounds on some popular songs. Round one, fight! First up is some classic chugging from Just What I Needed by The Cars. This bass line was originally played with a pick, but it works fine with fingers and gives us a simple starting point to battle these techniques. To pick the winner, let's spotlight a pivotal moment in the bass line where the right plucking technique has the most impact. First, let's look here between the end of the first bar and the start of the second bar. Because up to that point, all the notes are on the A string, so there's no opportunity to either rake or not rake. But here, crossing from the A string to the E string is where you have a decision to make. So with strict alternating, you'd keep going I, M, I, M on that transition. But with raking, you'd reuse the middle finger from the last A string pluck and start with that on the E string. So that means your whole second bar would end up getting flipped, M, I, M, I, M, I, M, I. And the same thing would happen between the third and fourth bars. You'd get flipped on the string cross if you raked. So which one of these approaches is better here? Well, neither one's terrible. Strict alternating gives you a simpler pattern of I am, I am over and over. Raking means you have to switch which finger you lead with twice, which takes more coordination, but doesn't really give you any noticeable efficiency gains. So for giving us the simplest approach to chug out these eighth notes, this round goes to the strict alternating technique. You didn't stand a chance against strict alternating. Bonus stage, smash the like button. Subscribe to advance to next round. Round two, fight! Round two in the battle of the bass plucking techniques is the classic bass riff from My Friend of Misery by Metallica. <laughs> the winner, let's spotlight just the second bar. If you alternate this bar, you play, you guessed it, I am, I am, I am, I am, no change in pattern. But if you rake, you get I, 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 M, 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 I, I. So you change fingers a lot less times, which makes a big difference in how easy it is to play this. The raking also helps it to have that flowing feeling with the notes ringing out. It's a little harder to get that to sound smooth with alternating. In fact, it's hard to play this at all with strict alternating. I had to practice it specifically just so I could demo it for you, but when I started, I was at like half speed. I am, I am, oh shit. Because for a bass line with this string crossing pattern, raking feels way more natural. But maybe that's just my take. So let's put this vote to the current steward of this riff, Robert Trujillo. You resisted raking for the last time. Round three, fight! Last up, we're looking at a little slice of Johnny Kick a Hole in the Sky from the Mother's Milk album by the Chili Peppers. We need to spotlight two sections of this bass line to do a fair judging. So first let's look here between beats one and two on this first string crossing. 
If you strictly alternate, you keep your IMIM -I -M rocking without changing pattern, which keeps you locked in for the rest of the bar. If you rake, you get flipped mid bar IMMI, -M which adds some complication to the plucking pattern without really giving you any efficiency gains. So because it's fast and all the notes are grouped in twos, strict alternating feels better in this situation. Now let's look at the second bar. You could strictly alternate I am all the way through, but because the notes are in groups of three and changing strings quickly, that feels a little clunky. If you rake, you go I am I, and then you rake and get to repeat I am I, I am I, I am I, I am I. So every time you play those same three notes, you use the same plucking pattern also, which simplifies the coordination for your brain and fingers. So raking is a solid win here. So I'm calling this round a draw. Strict alternating kills it in bar one, raking dominates in bar two. All right, the winner is, wait, a draw game? Is this a glitch in the Bass Fighter cartridge? Or maybe it's a Josh illustrating a point scenario. As with most internet bass technique debates, there's not really a right and a wrong technique. I don't know of a single pro bass player who doesn't use both of these techniques, sometimes strictly alternating, sometimes raking, depending on the situation. Even the names that come up on bass forums as like the shining examples of why you should only strictly alternate and you should never rake, they don't really hold water, like Dave LaRue. People say, oh, you should never rake because Dave LaRue says, but here's Dave LaRue and he's raking. Or you'll hear, oh, no raking, bro, because Adam Nitty says, but here's what Adam Nitty actually says. Alternating is not better than raking. Neither is raking better than alternating. They are two different technical disciplines that you should master. You even hear this idea that raking will like slow you down and strict alternating is the only way to play fast. Well, if that's true, somebody better tell Jeff Berlin and Mohini Day and Billy Sheehan. It's really tragic that those players are so slow from using raking. So they're both good techniques. But like I said before, if you're not careful, you could fall into the big bad plucking trap. So here's the trap. You can get away with whatever plucking pattern you want at slow speeds. I mean, most simple bass lines you could even pluck with just one finger. Because of that, it's easy to have shoddy alternating technique where you've got fingers repeating on the same string or you're raking lazily when you should really be strictly alternating. And then when you try to play faster lines, you just stumble, stumble, stumble. And without some attention, this problem sneaks by invisibly while you're staring intently at your fretting hand. So as a beginner, you have to force yourself to practice solid alternating, even on bass lines where you could get away with lazy technique. Because if you don't train yourself up on the slow stuff, you'll be stumbling to your doom when you try to play the fast stuff. <laughs> So strict alternating is often simpler because you don't really have to make plucking decisions. You just I am, I am your way through everything. But it can make some songs harder depending on note grouping and string crossings like we saw in My Friend of Misery, which is where raking can save the day. It's easier to get a nice flowing feeling. It's essential for funky rakes like Sissy Strut by the Meters and also funky ghost notes like Girls on Film by Duran Duran. But sometimes raking makes your plucking pointlessly complex, like we saw in the Cars bass line, and it can also act as a crutch for bad alternating technique. And that's why I don't let students of my Beginner to Badass course do raking. I mean, I encourage them not to rake early on. I definitely don't show up to their houses and force them not to. Do I hear raking in there? So how do you know which technique is gonna give you the best plucking pattern for a given bass line? Here's a little math hack to help you figure out which one to use. If you're string crossing with even numbered groups of notes like twos or fours, it's simpler to strictly alternate because the even numbered groups of notes will match up with the even number of fingers you're plucking with, two. So if you're playing octave fifth root, two notes, two notes, two notes, then strictly alternating will give you the simplest result. I am, I am, I am. If you've got odd numbered note groups like single notes or groups of three, it's often best to rake. Strategically raking can help get your odd number note groups to line up with your even number of plucking fingers, which is still two. So if you've got something like one note, one note, one note, raking gives you a super easy option to either do I, I, I or M, M, M. 
Remember that sometimes a baseline will require a mix of strict alternating and raking, like we saw in Johnny Kick a Hole in the Sky, so you can decide chunk by chunk which technique to use. And often, there are multiple good plucking patterns for a given baseline. In that case, just pick your favorite and stick to it if you want to get up to speed the fastest. Secret character unlocked! The one finger plucking technique! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.